All right, guys, uh, another day to talk football. Football is a never-ending conversation. It's like the river Mississippi. It's very long and it's continuously flowing. And I've got the expert. It's not about me. There is nothing that I know that these guys don't know way, way over. Statistician is here, yeah, Mario Leo. You have the schoolboy international that is here. And you have the professor himself, Bobby, is here. And we have other guys, our guests in the waiting room as well, to sub in when the time arrives. Uh, the chief from Mikoreland, China, is there already. Why would he not be there when Liverpool had won anyway? So let's take let's take it straight up. I'm going to start with you, uh, Mario. Good, good afternoon to you, everybody there. But Mario, let me start with you. And I'm going to take it away from Germany, uh, even though Xabi Alonso and his words have continued to rally late. I don't know why they do that, but... We've continued to rally late and uh, keep everybody's on the edge of the seats. But let's start with Chelsea. Chelsea have 45 players and the reserve team, the youth team, and all that. And the coach started its a team against Man City that I think was the best on the day. Yeah, Man City did win the game. Yes, they won two goals to nothing. But when you look at everything being equal, Paris per se, as they say, you would say that it was not a bad game from the Chelsea side. But just before kickoff, Ryan Sterling Camp came out to say uh, he wasn't told why he wasn't dressed. Uh, Mario, you've been in the game long enough. Does a coach have to explain to every player, especially senior player, why they are not dressed at all time? Especially when you have a team as big as a church, as a congregation, as an orchestra. Do you have to explain to your players all the time? Well, usually you have a team gathering 24 hours before the match, yeah, where where everybody gets uh, their role and responsibilities. Yeah, the, the player who be fielded as the starting eleven, they know the day before. Uh, the players who are going to be on the bench, they know the day before, and the players who are not made the squad, they will they know the play the, the the day before. So that's why you see now in the media in in the UK on BBC and so on. Yeah, that, that Raheem Sterling has let his teammates down with, with making this statement. Obviously, he hasn't publicly spoken, but his management has. And obviously, that discussion took place yeah, after he was not being chosen to be part of the squad. And then, obviously, um, in that frustration, he, usually a player reaches out to his agent saying, this is, this is unfair and this is not great. And unfortunately, in this case, the agency obviously has gone public and saying, that uh, Raheem Sterling is very committed because they wanted to go against the rumours that Raheem Sterling is linked with Juventus, that Chelsea is pos possibly thinking about a swap deal between Chiesa um, and Raheem Sterling. So it's it's a it's a it's a huge kind of mess up. Uh, but obviously, when you have forty five players and you can uh, field in your squad twenty on the bench because you can make five substitutions, um, you obviously have to disappoint. 20, 23, 25 players and, and and the Chelsea squad obviously they don't they don't have let's say 10 youngsters and 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 10 kind of wannabe stars. I mean Chelsea has got about 35 established players yeah who would be possibly in the second half of the Premier League where from Everton downwards to the newly promoted Ipswich would would be in the starting 11 and and they they are not part of the squad. So obviously the agents, the environment, the play, the, the, the players themselves, uh, they will be very, very un unsatisfying, and 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 obviously, especially when we count the days until August thirty first, yeah, and and come September first, and they will not be part of the squad. This will be a huge uproar. So now we obviously see a a dog fight yeah, for the next twelve days, yeah, that who's going to be part of the Chelsea squad and who not, and who's going to be a loanee and who's going to be sold, because ultimately, when you spend so much money over the last uh, two years. Financial fair play and and point deduction from the Premier Re Premier League rules will hunt you and and will threaten you. So obviously Chelsea better goes into a selling mode. But on the other hand, entire Europe top five leagues know that Chelsea is in selling mode and obviously won't pay the prices Chelsea once would like to achieve. So um, it's it's a huge dilemma for for Chelsea all along. And and uh, Maresca as the head coach, he's probably the poorest man in town. Mm -hmm. Although he started well, and obviously it's a big chance for him to make a stand. And I think uh, from the selection he's made, um, the Chelsea supporters have been proud. Um, the, the players gave everything on the pitch. They tried their level best. Um, Jackson could have scored a couple of goals um, in, in, in with his chances, and so could have been another. So it was a close game overall, and, and Man City... And as did Pep Guardiola, I was quite surprised to take away the three points. But ultimately, at the end of the day, they, they fully deserve the three points. Now, let's come to you, Abib. Uh, as a football fan, uh, how does 
how does it make you feel when a player in your team, because he's not starting the first game of the season or just one game, and if you consider the fact that Ryan Sterling had a fantastic preseason, he was one of the regulars of the preseasons, and uh, they just go out in the press. We saw it with Sancho. Is it the new normal? Coach says he's not training well, he's not applying himself well, and then he came out in the press and he was attacking the, 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 the coach. Obama Young did the same with Ateta. You know, Zlatan with, with the, the, the whole Zlatan and uh, Pep Guardiola talk and all of that. Is this the new normal? As a fan, how do you react to players like this? Do you take side with the player or you take side with the coach or you take side with the club? Well, first of all, thank you for that question, Nidofi. Um, While I understand like the grievances of the player, I, I was actually opportunity to like watch Ryan Sterling in the preseason when Chelsea played against Celtic. He was in blistering strength form. He played very well. And I can understand his sentiments like, oh, I played very well during preseason. I was in top form and I did very well. So I should be in the starting level. Well, why that is not always the case? The coach, the coaches have like different responsibilities to cater for like 20 to 25 players. And it's very, very difficult. But I also feel like it's very disrespectful to the coach, to his teammates, and to the club itself. And this is where the question of lack of leadership comes into play in a club like Chelsea. Because in the old days, or in, when you had like the John Terry, the Lampard, you dare not come out as a player and say, oh, I played very well uh, during preseason. The coach should deserves, the coach owes me an explanation. No, the coach doesn't owe you an explanation. They are supposed to train and make yourself available for selection. I think it's the kind of new normal that we're having these days. And you find out in clubs that actually lack structure and organization. I don't think Ryan Sterling will try this in Real Madrid. I don't think Ryan Sterling will try this at Man City. And I don't think Ryan Sterling will try this at even Barcelona or Bayern Munich. Clubs where they have hierarchy and structure. You dare not come out to say, oh, I was playing very well, so I deserve to be in the starting lineup. It speaks of lack of disrespect to the players, to the coaches, and to the club in general. Just okay, so I like the fact that my team is uh, speaking in this tune because when I start subbing people out, nobody says, oh, I'm disrespecting them. <laughs> I'm the coach. I have the power to sub you out. <laughs> because I've got a lot of people queuing up in the waiting room. But I, I, I want to owe you guys on for a while. Uh, Bobby, let me come to you here. Manchester United won against Fulham 1-0. Wait for the last minute to score that goal by Joshua Zexi. But then, what I loved about Man United was the fact that, for once, they have a bench that can come in and change the tide. Even though some of the Man United fans that I listened to were saying, oh, why don't we start Ganacho? Why don't we start Joshua Zexi? That's the reason you brought him. Don't be playing a false nine when you have a, a clerk striker there. What is your position with that, uh, Bobby? Um... <laughs> So basically, before the game even started, I knew I had a feeling that Genacho won't start and Zexi won't start. Um, Ten Hag has given his reasons. Zexi is not ready to start yet. He's not. He's not. His fitness is not at the level where he should be starting. He so, played few games. He, yeah, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Okay. He played maybe few minutes at the Euros. He joined preseason late because he was on holiday. Um, Genacho, the same thing. Genacho didn't have so much minutes in the Copa America. He didn't have he didn't play any preseason game apart from the community shield. So on his fitness level is not up there. So it was certain that they don't need to start. I can understand that one. I have no problem with that. At least you have players who can come on and start the game with Rashford on the left and um Ahmad on the right. Playing the um, first nine narrative between Mount and Bruno was expected. And I don't see anything wrong because it keeps us compact and gives us more bodies in the um, on the pitch and able to move the ball in tight spaces. So it's fine. I have no problem. Just the way Pep did in the game against Chelsea where he started with uh, Doku on the right and C Savinho on the left. And somewhere 10 minutes into the game, he decided to switch them. I've That's decided right. to switch my plan as well. Instead of subbing anybody out, I'm going to take everybody along on the show today. The chief from Port Harcourt, a mentor and an inspiration to my generations and the generation behind me and a lot more to come, those who are willing to learn and read and understand. Uh, if for nothing, he has left us a marker. You see this book, 
Uh, a Thousand Times on the Same Road is a book that if you're a player in the league, you're a journalist, you're a coach, you should read because it's um, it's it, it's a guide. It's a guide to, to Nigerian football. And I also have the highest paid player in the Nigerian league with us, Alimi Sekiru, who plays for one of the best teams in Nigeria right now. Uh, one of the most active Nigerian uh, MPFA player on social media as well. Alimi Sekiru is... Uh, He's gone past being my friend, uh, he's my brother, and somebody that I, I appreciate and adore a whole lot. So I'm going to bring that forth. Uh, let me start with you, Alimi. Uh, you guys played AS Farabat last season. You guys went away, Remo Stars. When I say you guys, I mean Remo Stars. Went away, won that game by, I mean, drew that game 1 1, came back to Ikene, your home ground, not your theater of dreams, but not Liki Liki Roof, your arm feed, <laughs> but. Um, you guys didn't have a Genge pressing or uh, a shower slot. Sorry, you guys didn't have a slot. Uh, now, nah, the fist just is reversed. You've played your home game yesterday. You want to go to one. Now, you need to go to Morocco. Now, if I know Moroccans very well, even though China will tell you more about it, if you read this book, about the antics of the North Africans, how high is that mountain for you guys to climb? And I like your outfit, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, good morning. Honestly, uh, it was a, a very difficult game yesterday, but we, we did our best and we did our, uh, our homework. So, uh, we got to the victory. Uh, the, looking forward to the, the, the return leg, it would be a bit uh, difficult, but not impossible. Like we, the players, uh, we've charged ourselves. Uh, we can go uh, beyond our... Uh, our uh, our capacity to to get the absolute victory because I, I think uh, our coach said this is not a payback time, but uh, to we the players uh, we want to take it as as a payback for uh, the previous season they denied us uh, the slots. So Ali, we were Ali charging me, ourselves to go. Alimi, you've played under the most of all the players in the league currently. You've played under the most number of coaches. You played for Wari Wolf. You played for Three SC. You played for practically almost every team, and some some very very tactically astute coach. What is special about Ijabo? Not the coach, the tactics, the style. What is? I mean, people talk about tiki taka, genge pressing, and all that. This Ijabo that Daniel Ugumodidi uses. What is special about it? What's unique? Because you guys are always on the top two, top two, top two in the league. What's special about that system? Uh, well, uh, there are so many uh, things special about uh, his tactics and uh, his philosophy. He, he likes, uh, he wants to play the, the, high, the, the high press uh, and uh, the, 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 the fast kind of football. Like he, he wants to meet up to uh, with the, the European standard and the North African standard because I think where where he, he did his uh, his uh, schooling or whatever it is he did, since he learned there, he's trying to bring it down here. Like we can also be like them, if not up to them, but we can also be like them. And uh, uh, but yesterday's game, it really showed in our uh, in our game the the pressure, the antics, and we we. Met up to the standard, and I think we also felt the need of the person. There's a player in your team that is becoming the new Celestine Babayaro. He assists, he scores, he scored your second goal yesterday. Smiler, he was in the national team the last time we were in camp. Uh, can you talk to us a bit about him? What he what is he eat about him? Aside of the field that we don't know because there's just something unique about him. He's always in the right position at the right time, whether it is crossing the ball or scoring the goals. What's that thing that is unique about him? His training regime, his feeding, his habit. What's that thing that makes him special? I think he rests a lot. He Whoa. rests a lot. That's one, uh, one different thing uh, about him with all the players here. He, he, he finds uh, peace in sleeping. I bet you if I go to his room right now, he will be sleeping. You played for, for Worry Wolves. I can't count them on the, um, on the tip of my fingers. What is this thing about Remo Stars that makes you guys just feel like you guys are gladiators? It used to be Rivers United that I always say, you know, if you want to play football in Nigeria, go to Rivers United. Right now, Rivers United are a shitty club. Uh, I mean, they're a club, club of thugs. They've always been anyway. China, I'm not trying to spite on you. I'm coming to you. 
But what's the thing about Remo stars that makes it look like they are? They used to. They remind me of what Julius Berger and Igu Cement used to be. What's the thing about Remo stars that people out here needs to know? Uh, uh, one, generally, Remo stars is uh, is a developmental club. They like believe in young stars. Yes. Okay. They believe in young stars. If you come down to our academy, a lot of good special talents down here. Believe me. Wow. So right here, uh, we we look up to ourselves. The younger ones, they are looking up to we, the senior ones, for inspiration. I want to be like this person. I want to play like this person. I want to make a name for myself like this person. Well, that's a good one. Uh, let me shift. Uh, China Liverpool. We all thought that a new coach means that they will be struggling, that the season will not go well because that's what's happened when Asen Wenger left, when Silas Ferguson left, when Bobby Shankly left back in the day, when Kenny Daglash left. It's always like that. You know, when a big, long-time coach that have been there close to 10 years or more, the club seems to struggle. If we go by preseason and what happened against, I know that people say it's just East Push Town. Come on, Tractor Boys, Liverpool are supposed to beat them any day, even with their reserve. But the system of play, the audacity of the coach to remove uh, what's his name now? The the centre back that he said, yeah, Kwanza. Kwanza, yeah, that it was he just removed him at half time. That's some Mourinho ish kind of behaviour, you know what he did to uh, Bolarush, Khalid Bolarush back in the day, and he came out publicly in the press to say, you know, he wasn't winning the duels. That's why I removed him. And from my count, he had four duels. He won two, lost two, and the coach was not pleased. Uh, what's the tune for you as a Liverpoolian? Does this set a tune for you to say, you know what, this is the kind of coach that I want? Or you will say, that thing he did to Kwanza, he can't do it to Mosala, he can't do it to Trenton and Arnold. If he tries it, we will lose the dressing room. What is the tune for you people right now? For me, I'm observing. Um, it's just one competitive game, which the Liverpool won against Ipswich Town, like you say. So I'm, I'm observing. But for most fans of the club, I mean, four Liverpool fan WhatsApp groups, and most fans are not happy that the club has not signed players like, say, Arsenal, like Manchester United, maybe like Chelsea. I don't know what the, the club has not signed players. But for me, I'm observing. Uh, slot ball, they called it. Uh, Saturday's game was, I mean, it was Ipswich Town. Just about how you try to paint it, it was Ipswich Town. And you expect Liverpool to beat Ipswich Town every day of the week. You are rude. Liverpool won that game 2 0 against Ipswich Town. I'm still observing. I expect better football. I expect uh, greater things. I set a modest expectation for myself this season, which is a top four finish. I don't want Wahala, which is a top four finish. So I'm good with the club right now. But for fans of the club, I'm saying this because I'm in four Liverpool fan group. They want players to be signed. I played a game called Football Manager. I played that game, that game since, 20, since the year 2000. I buy it every year, Football Manager. Now, and in Football Manager, there is joy in the transfer window. They want to buy players. And I tell my friends, hey, look, you guys think you're playing football, football manager. All the coach said was, I met a great team. Let me watch the team in precision. I don't know if I need anybody to add it to the team. And he watched the team. Won three great matches in the US. And the one player he wanted, he did not want the club, which is the player from Real, <laughs> Real Sociedad. So uh, probably the next 11 days, the club will see someone else they want. The club should buy players because, I mean, we, before the league even... By, by the time the league ended, Liverpool lost Thiago to retirement and yeah. Matty to free transfer. And the club lost two players in the transfer market, right? Uh, Cavalio and the other youngster that left. So the club needs to get at least two players inside. Really, I think the club will. But for now, I'm happy we won the game. Three points. Wait for the next one. I hope for the best. Okay. So now, for you that have travelled to the north of Africa to play... In continental games with dolphins with different teams uh you have been part of a trip of players that travel out of nigeria without international passports you have been part of the people who went to go and embarrass us you people went and drove around the roundabout and came back shamefully shamelessly you, you you've also gone there to play game and at least you play football even though they beat you people what is the advice you are giving to sikiru and his team because ijabol in nigeria is different from ijabol in morocco Go and win the game. How? Or go and not lose the game. How? Let me tell you something, right? People fear North Africa. 
right? We have been to North Africa and we have won against Arab contractors. We have drawn against Ismaili in North Africa. We have also been to North Africa and we are beating Kusana Agadir in Morocco. I don't even know if Dolphins has lost. Okay, we have lost in North Africa against um, this same team in 2005 in the CAF Confederation Cup final. We lost 3-0 there. Now, but there is one unique game in North Africa, in Morocco, against Kusana. You, you know, Sporting again there. You are beating them 1-0 in Calabar, and everybody felt sorry for us. How can you take a 1-0 win to Calabar, to, to Morocco? When we got to Morocco, they were very nice to us. When we going in the feet far away in one chop, they were so nice to us. They gave us everything we wanted. Everything we wanted. By the time the match started, in less than 10 minutes, they had cancelled the one goal. They cancelled it. But in the remaining 80 minutes, Dolphins was led by uh, Emma Godwin. We had Chijoku Ejogu in goal that day. And Ejogu was catching everything. The defense held, held they are steadfast. And that game ended one nil. Still the penalty shootout. Now, I'll tell you, so you may not have heard, or you can ask Chijoku Ejogu if you meet him. And Ejogu went to our sports commissioner, Owen Oyesu. He said, Oga, I go catch all the penalties. How much you give a penalty where I go catch? Wow. And the commissioner said one thousand dollars per penalty kick. He said, "Okay, make I see him." The commissioner counted five thousand dollars and gave to the team manager. A job we said to his boys, "Make on a cut, make on a score, on a penalty. I will catch my own." A job who saved four penalty kicks that day, and that's how we qualified. But it's not about the penalty kicks he saved and the money that was offered to him. My the brother, is about we took to... a one. We took a one nil win to Morocco. We considered in the first 10 minutes, yes, we are not knocked out. So it's about determination. It's about players that can say, look, this is our football. It, it, it is do or die. You see, and I, see, Sikiru, you don't know me, but I know you. You see, I'm a player from the Nigerian League, but I don't get heart, but I don't get mind. You guys have no heart and mind to play football. No, Sikiru gets you, you earn the big salaries. No, I'm, 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 I'm talking to you because it's what I'm seeing here. Okay, yeah. I'm going to talk for church. You are the point of contact to other players. That's what they talk about, church. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what I'm saying is that is this. What I'm saying is, and there, there's another story told in Rangers. Oh, we will tell you that story. They played a game in the car in the Cup Champions League or Confederation Cup when he was chairman of the club, and they won one nil in Enugu. And he told his players, if any of you is not bold enough to play the, the second leg, tell me now. Two of the key players raised their hand up. Oh, me said, no hard feelings, you won't travel with us. Two of their best players. Rangers went there and won the match and came back to the second round. So, listen, you feel good that you can see four goals, it's possible. It's possible. You can go there and win. Now your mind. Sekiru. Now your mind. Sekiru. Now your mind. <laughs> my takeaway my take away from this. As soon as they go, so go meet collation. I may tell her, say, Chemo, I go score a trick for the away game. How much you go give me per game? <laughs> Talking about hat trick and how much you give per game. I don't know if I have, I have time. We used to have a player at Dolphin called Undivis I know him, Warrior. Warrior. That's you know him. Yes, He's the now. headband time. The headband, my guy. He was, yes. One day he went to the chairman of the club, Brian Heath, the Scotman from Scotland. He said, Oga, oh, my match bonus for the next one must give me and broke. And Brian Heath said, for a match you've not played, he said, we will win and I will score. Give my match bonus. The white man was, what's going on? And he gave him the money just to see. By the end of the first half of that game in Port Harcourt, Opara had scored two goals. Uh -huh. And he told the coach, David Aguirre, he said, coach, come out me. I don't win the match. If I defend, I don't know if he defend two goals, I'm concerned then. So what I'm saying now is that, you see, I'm a sports journalist. I'm a broadcaster. If you give me a microphone in Port Harcourt, in Kano, in UK, in Russia, anywhere, I will talk. That's my job. I will talk. So if you're a footballer, why can you only play in Ibadan or in Remo? Or at, or at, uh, in Remo? Why not if you play for Remo, play for Morocco? Don't be the same, boy. Let me say level players. Either so red or baba. What, 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 what I'm saying is this. Right? Now, so China I, I take tongue coach from a motivational speaker for my show. You don't talk about my show. That will concern you. That will concern you. That will concern you. <laughs> I will talk my man. Don't be invited to come. Don't be invited hey. to come. But you see, uh, Sekiru, everybody, watch, everybody that watches football knows that 
when you enter the field to play a game, they, they tell you now, there are only three possible results. Either you win, you draw, you lose, right? Yeah. Th those where they lose, there's no plan to lose the match. They went to win. True. But yeah. circumstances made them lose. It's that one day. So, like I said, if you go that lose 4 0, it's not like you did not try, you did your best. But I'm saying that you and your players tell yourselves, to see this game, this one a cup final. How they will win last year, win you this year? For which thing now? Okay, let me yeah, see. I'm say be high player for Nigerian League. If but he's the highest paid player, player now. Player, if he not do well, we'll fire him. You go report to him. You go report to him. Money now. What you be that? We we'll go send boys. Those you go report to him now. We we'll go send Potter Court boys. Go. He cannot. He cannot be too gentle. I wanted. I, I wanted to just be, motivate you guys a bit. It's all in your hands. It's all let, in your hands. Let me circle it's back your to to Mario. Mario, I know that everything that China have been saying is alien to you. They don't do like that in Germany. Yeah, but accept us. This is our own way, and we like it like that. Uh, let me come back to you, um, Mario. This thing with Leverkusen, that they are always leaving it late. Are we to say is a new normal where they wait to the 88 minutes and then all of a sudden they find the, the zest, the energy, the, the girl to come into the game? Why don't score this goal from the beginning and keep everybody at peace? Is it a new normal to keep the energy flowing to the end of the game? Well, it's, it's not a new normal. It's obviously the belief of Bayer Leverkusen squad uh, to always find solutions. Uh, I mean, it's just like a chess game. Yeah, when we have all the an analysis, uh, analysis and analysts um, in the game, we have the video analysis, um, we have the match preparations, and, and everybody knows strengths and weaknesses from the opponents. Um, and Bayer Leverkusen obviously um, has done tremendously well last season, finding late solutions in in scoring goals, but it's it's not only finding the solution, it's believing that you can find a solution. And I think that's the new normal for Bayern 04 Leverkusen. But not many teams can 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 have that belief, yeah, because you can see it in the body language. You can see it when when players start to moan with the opponents that they are dissatisfied about themselves. And then obviously they they discourage the their their teammates and the belief of the team is not there. While Bayern 04 Leverkusen, you don't see that at all. You know, never see a head down. Yeah, the head goes up, looking for the next attack, look, looking for the next wave. They want to score the goals earlier, Edafa, believe me. But obviously, they have the strong belief that they will score late, that they will find the solution and, and win the game. And I think that's that's outstanding. And that's that's a fantastic achievement uh, for Bayern Rufiel Leverkusen, the team, which makes them a favorite of uh, the, the, the coming Bundesliga season again. Bobby, uh, let me come to you. Uh, some people are satisfied. Liverpool say the Liverpool fans say they need more players. But are you satisfied with your signings? Are you okay to say, you know, we've signed the players that we need just in case any player doesn't come in? For me as an Arsenal fan, I'm still hoping. I was speaking to the vice chairman of my estate this morning and he was asked, telling me that he's worried. I said, well, if Arsenal, he's worried that Arsenal doesn't have a striker and they don't have a backup for, for Bukayo Saka. For me... Uh, Iten Wanneri can back up for him and he'll be getting Mikel Merino this week I'm satisfied as an Arsenal fan we win the league, good, if we don't win it we'll come second again, China can do all his uh, whatever, are you satisfied with what you've signed at Man United right now? Because I still think that there is something missing in the base of that midfield, in my opinion, I don't know about yours um, Being satisfied <clears throat> excuse me, that, um, that's absolutely no, I'm not satisfied because as you say in the midfield, we need we need cover in the midfield because we cannot depend on Casimiro throughout the season. There will be injuries, there will be suspensions, they will be deep in form. Some people are being carried away that he's back to form. I don't agree that that is just one game. There are so many games to be played, so we need options. So I think ideally we need two more midfielders, a CDM, maybe an eight or another guy who can combine both um, the eight and the six. Then we need a left back. I'm not even just an alternative net back or a backup. We need a starting left back because we cannot depend on Shaw anymore. Because even if Shaw comes back in um, a month's time, he's going to get injured again, definitely before December. Wow. Really so we need another back. we need another left back. Yeah. Uh, Abib, as we wind down the clock, we've got uh, just seven minutes to go on the clock. Uh, when you look at uh, the Chelsea conundrum of congregation that they have, Chelsea have a congregation now, and the choir master can no longer even reach out to the back people. 
what is the best advice? Because, I mean, they are owned by an American. You are in America. You kind of feel the pause of how Americans do sporting business. What's the best advice you can give to Chelsea fans so that they can hold their horses or sharpen their guns? Okay, first of all, um, Edafi, let me digress a bit. Um, I know that China has been the bad cop, but I would like to be the good cop in this case. I'm a big fan of Secure, and, and I like his personality. I'm also a fan of Remo Stars. I know Oga China is like, hard on you, but I would just like to be like the soft spot and be like, you're a good player. I like your personality. Get sad! <laughs> and I'm really starstruck seeing you. And to answer your question, Edafi... Maybe they're not going uh, for Morocco first. <laughs> to answer your question, Edafi, I think Chelsea fans have to like come down to the new reality. I saw Mikel, video clips of Mikel betraying the club, getting angry, saying during his time... Upcoming, uh, upco you had Mikel will be upcoming football analyst, so that you give the senior men like us respect now. Mikel will be is an <laughs> upcoming amateur analyst, Abi. not Sabi the work. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> So we, we had him betray the club, the, the staffs, the owner. But I think Chelsea fans need to realize the new reality. The club they once supported from the early 2000 to like the 2020 is gone. Doesn't exist anymore. Roman Abramovich is no longer the owner. The expectation of the club is different. They have new owners, which are Americans. And their vision and their dream for the club is different from whatever Roman had. They are no longer interested in winning trophies. They just want to sign like the youngest of stars and probably sell them at high profits. So whatever expectation they have, like they are supposed to be a big club, they are supposed to be competing, doesn't exist again. And they have to come to the new reality, which is they are going to be a mid-table club and they are just going to go back to the Chelsea before Roman Abramovich, which was just like a mid-table club for players to come and retire in. So yeah. it's like a new reality for them and they have to like come in terms with that. So the expectation of the owners are different. Abramovich is no longer in charge. Marina Granovska, which is one of the most important women in football, is no longer in charge of doing deals again. They have new people in charge, new personality in charge, and their vision and motto is quite different. So, yeah, so, fans, I so Abib, this is your idea of being a good cop, right? No problem. You put your knee, your, the entire weight of your knee on the neck of Chelsea fans and you're a good cop. No problem. <laughs> Uh, Mario, let me let me let me wrap up with you on this one. Uh, last time at you said that Bayern would not win the German Bundesliga. The season is upon us next weekend. What should Vincent Company do to stay on the job till next season? What should he do? What would he achieve to keep him on the job? Because if Bayern doesn't win the title, definitely he's out. But what can he do uh, to stay on the job? I, I wouldn't predict that he will be out if he doesn't win the title. I mean, if if it's it's a transition year for for Bayern. Obviously, he he got the players he he wanted. Bayern has given him a chance uh, because he's obviously a, a much more inexperienced coach than yeah you know, all all the other contenders. Uh, this is the biggest weakness. So Vincent Company needs to prove month by month that the team performs better, that the dressing room is aligned, and obviously we have. Um, Alimi here, he knows how important the dressing room is. Yeah, obviously, if there is there, if there is somebody who is who is unhappy in the squad, yeah, that the, the, the captain of the squad and, and the players need to need to hold him because obviously everybody's got ambitions to play. And if you have a starstruck team like like Bayern Munich, you need to dissatisfy. And what we heard about the cup weekend was um, Friday. Leon Goretzka is not part of the squad. Saturday, Leon Goretzka is not part of the squad. Even Rudi Völler got in. If Leon Goretzka has ambition to participate in the 2026 World Cup, he needs to change the, the team. He needs to he needs to transfer away from Bayern. So obviously, you see that's that's something which which is destabilizing the, the dressing room. Yeah, when when one key player, one one very very established player, is obviously dissatisfied. Similar to Raheem Sterling. So um, Vincent Company is very, very good in communicating. That's what I observe. That's why he's got the backing of, of uh, Thomas Müller, um, of Joshua Kimmich, especially Joshua Kimmich, who hates to be uh, a right back. <laughs> he's, he wants to be a defensive midfielder. Now he's back in a defensive midfield. So he's the biggest supporter of Vincent Company for the moment. So obviously he makes his key players happy. Um, and that's that's critical. Um, and also now he needs to sort of get... Uh, he's, he's, he's solved the, the Delish, the Masrui case. Uh, Masraoui case, so that that's good for him. And then and now, like, we just need to wrap up with with Leon Goretzka. I need to find a solution for him. 
either being part of the squad or or sell him off. And I think then Bayern needs calmness, quietness, and and lots of dialogue. And that's where where Vincent Company knows as an established superstar how to deal with with yeah players' individual motivations. All right, uh, uh, Sikir Ali, me the hope of Nigeria. The hope of Nigerians are hanging on you and your teammates. Uh, no matter how you look at it, Nigerians want to see their best teams and their best players in the CAF Champions League at the group stage and beyond. I mean, we want to see you guys in the semifinals and final. That's where we belong. I'm not being arrogant here. And this is not us piling up too much pressure on you, but I, I make bold to say this because you will not be available for the Friday edition of this show. But even though we'll be excited if you are available, but you could be traveling and stuck up in different time zones. Please, what are you promising Nigerians? You have one minute to say that. What are you and your teammates? We believe in you people, but I don't know if you guys believe in yourself that much. What are you promising Nigerians that through the aid and facilitation of Ijabol, you will do when you go to Morocco. What are you? What is the promise you're giving us? One minute. Honestly, since uh, the beginning of, uh, of uh, the season, since we had uh, the pairings of uh, we playing far, we we the players uh, we have really come together to conclude that, that this season it will be different. And I think it showed that during uh, the game yesterday, the determination was there. Everybody was uh, up and doing. And we, we, we knew what it was, a 2-1 uh, lead uh, uh, to Morocco. And we know how it would look like, the fans, the atmosphere, what it would look like. So we're already preparing our mind to it. And uh, we've assured uh, the fans that came to support us uh, all, all through yesterday that we're going to do something different this time around. Will you will you walk up to Kule Shunami and tell him, Chairman, give me $1,000 for every goal that I score. Will you be will you be bold enough to do that? Uh, just to put this uh, out here, we, we, I and uh, Tsunami, we have a personal deal, uh, something uh, of that nature already. Uh, please tell us That's the deal. In place in tell us the deal. What's the deal? <laughs> give us the breaking... The, give us the exclusive. No, time, it, is, time it, is running out. What's the exclusive? It, 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 it's it, it's between us. It's it's between us, but it's close to like what you just said. What okay. you just mentioned. Okay, good. Let's keep it that way. Thank you very much for everyone who's joined us on the show, including China, who's struggling with his network. God bless you guys. Uh, let's do this again on Friday. It's been the views from the stand, and it's a pleasure having all of you today. I decided not to sub anyone out. Thank you very much. Let's do this again on Friday. Bye bye, guys. Thank you for having me. You're Thanks. welcome, bro. Thanks for having me. Bye for now.